Hi, I'm Martin Benedetto alongside Danny Pello, Harry Hawkins, and Taylor Denson. There's no build-up needed for this week. At 6-0, Trinity and Amherst are tied for first in the NESCAC, and the winner of their game this weekend will determine the 2011 NESCAC champion. TSM football coming at you! is on the special teams. Trini and Amherst are in the top three in a majority of the statistical categories in the NESCAC. With such well-rounded teams, I believe that special teams will play a big factor in determining the outcome of this game. Amherst leads the NESCAC in successful field goals with nine, while Trini has also seen surprising success from freshman kicker Zach Conti. And don't be surprised if this game comes down to a last-minute field goal. However, Amherst is also number one in the NESCAC in punt returning, averaging 13 yards per return with one return for a touchdown. Despite this, I think that it will be Trinity's return team that will step up to provide a huge spark this weekend. With a defensive struggle expected, don't be surprised to see some wild plays on special teams to swing the momentum in this game. My focus of the week is on the battle of the bunkers. Both Evan and Eric Bunker are not only the stars of their team's rushing attack, but are also fierce sibling rivals. This Saturday's game will be the last time they get to face off each other in college, and the stakes couldn't be any bigger. Amherst and Trinity are undefeated, which means that the winner will be the NESCAC champion. Both Bunkers, especially Eric, will be fired up and ready to unleash big numbers on the ground. Evan got the best of his older brother in last year's matchup as he had a career game, while Eric ran for only 51 yards. Expect the Bantam to turn to Bunker early and often as he will yet again be out to prove that he is a better running back in the family. My focus of the week is the matchup between the Trinity run defense and the Amherst rushing attack. This year, the Lord Jeffs are averaging over 200 yards on the ground and 4.9 yards per carry, while Trinity's rush defense, which is ranked number one in the nation, is allowing 39 yards per game and one rush per carry. In order to control the clock and win this game, which is going to be crucial, the Bantams are going to need to stop Amherst's powerful rushing attack, which has scored 30 points three or more times this year and is averaging just a shade under 30. The Bantam defense has allowed 30 points total all year. My focus of the week is turnovers. This Saturday, Trinity versus Amherst will be a matchup of the two best teams in the NESCAC. Both are undefeated, separated by one point in scoring offense per game and four points in scoring defense per game. Turnovers may be the key to momentum early, and Amherst has been able to force 20 this season, easily leading the NESCAC in that department. However, the Lord Jeff's offense has had their fair share of trouble, turning the ball over 12 times compared to the Bantams, who have only given up the ball seven times. With such an even matchup, the Bantams will have to force the Lord Jeffs to cough up the ball early in order to escape Amherst with their seventh victory. My player to watch is sophomore running back Ben Crick. It is no secret that Crick and the Trinity rushing attack are vital to the Bantams' offensive production, but I will be focused on Crick's impact in the return game. Crick is making a name for himself with his speed and knack for ripping off long touchdown runs. I expect him to bring this aspect to the return game and set up his offense with good field position throughout the game. In fact, I would not be surprised to see Crick break loose on a punt return or a kick return and bring it all the way back for a bantam touchdown. My player to watch is senior linebacker Mark Snyder. Snyder is coming off the best game of his career in which he was named the NESCAC Co-Defensive Player of the Week for a stellar play against Middlebury. Snyder recorded 10 tackles, broke up a pass, and recovered a fumble to help lead the Bantams in a 42-7 victory over the Polar Bears. Prior to last Saturday's game, Snyder had only recorded 12 tackles on the season, but was able to step up his game against the league's best offense. After a performance like that, his confidence has to be high, which means that he is bound to be a factor against the Lord Jeffs. Number 53 will be a big factor in Saturday's game, especially now that he's a DP guarantee. My player to watch is sophomore running back Evan Bunker. Last year in their win over Amherst, Bunker carried the ball a school record 45 times for 211 yards in a thrilling last minute Trinity win. This year, Bunker is averaging 4.9 yards per carry and has scored four touchdowns for a dominant Trinity ground attack. He'll be a huge focus this week for head coach Jeff Devaney as the Bantams attempt to control the clock. Also, it's personal. 
Bunker's older brother Eric is the star running back for Amherst's attack, and he's averaging just over 100 yards per game this year with nine scores on the ground. Look for Bunker to have a big role this week as the Bantams try to take down the Lord Jeffs. My player to watch is wide receiver A.J. Jones. Last week, the sophomore had a huge game at Middlebury, hauling in five catches for 135 yards and two touchdowns. He has been the most effective receiver for the Bantams in 2011, compiling 324 receiving yards and five touchdowns. Both good for best on the team. With the Trinity quarterbacks improving each game and Amherst focused on the Bantam rushing attack, look for Jones to have a huge game and make some big gains this Saturday. Prediction time, guys. I think this will be one of the toughest games of the year for Trinity, and one that will be talked about for years to come. Trinity wins their closest matchup yet, 28-27. to Danny? You know, Mark, I think Trinity steps up their play to the highest level of the season and pulls off a 28-10 victory. Guys, I think it's going to be pretty close. I think Trinity pulls off the win. I think it's going to be 21-14, and I think it's going to come down to the wire. I say Trinity scores that winning touchdown inside two minutes from now. Guys, I agree with you. I think Trinity wins, but I think they eke it out in a battle of two pretty evenly matched teams. I think Trinity wins 21 to 20. That's our show for this week. We urge you to join the dozens of Trinity students traveling to Amherst this weekend to watch the Bantams as they go for their quest for a NESCAC championship.